YouTube, what's going on? This is Ben. All right, in this video, we're gonna be, you know, just showing you how simply it is to multiply your fruit trees. You, you know, these are, are propagate new fruit trees from your current fruit trees. And there's a few reasons why you might wanna do that. You might wanna just have a backup fruit tree in the event, you know, something maybe a disease maybe just you know the plant just die from whatever natural causes in, in in nature that might occur other reason you might want to maybe sell some of the trees you have you know another reason you want to give it away as gifts to, to to friends and families that they could have you know a similar tree you will have to, to grow you know but whichever reason you choose you know those propagating cuttings from the current fruit trees you have is a great is a great way to, to you know keep that cultivar you know into your yeah. so you know and there there's multiple ways to propagate new cuttings from it the, you know tree you could take cuttings or you could do ear layer or you could even graft you know a lot of people find grafting to be a little bit complicated is a hit and miss yeah, until there's you know, some people that really master the, the, the technique of grafting. Ear layering is pretty simple. It, you know, some trees are easier to ear layer than some. You know, taking cuttings from a tree and propagate in either water, soil. Yeah, but in this video, we, we're gonna be just using cuttings. You know, we're gonna show you how simple it is to take cutting from, especially a mulberry, we're gonna use a mulberry tree, you know, for instance. You know, you could do this with, with other fruit trees, figs, Barbados cherry, Suella, the hog plum, you know, whatever, moringa, the pomegranate, Dude, so there's a lot of fruit trees you could actually just use cuttings to to, to propagate a, a, a new tree, you know. So, but today we're gonna just focus on mulberry because I have excellent success with mulberry cuttings. All right, so let's go check that out. You looking to take a cutting from a tree, you know, you see right here, you know, you could get a, a cutting that's, you know, at least half an inch to an inch thick you know you want to look for the more woody type of uh, branches you know that's probably just ready to sprout some root if it once it, it it go into the soil like these are good good looking branches these are new growth right here you know it's probably ready you know put this in some soil it's going to sprout some root within a few weeks yep yeah, so that's one of the things you must always look for. Look for that woody looking, you know, branches. You, know? you, you don't want the, you don't want the extremely fresh growth. Let me give you an example. Like you, you don't want the, this to actually try and, and, and propagate something from. Yeah, you want thick, nice looking growth. All right, guys. So we're gonna come right here. And we're gonna take this. We're gonna take this this branch right here. So we're gonna cut right here. You know, normally I cut at an angle. You know that. You know the water could just slide right off and not cause an infection with the tree. Yeah, just like that. See, I kind of give it that ha angle. Yeah. So if rain falls, it's gonna just run right off. All right. So now we have a nice. Yeah, you know, branch here to propagate some new mulberry trees. All right, all right, all right, guys. So this is this is really simple. You know, you the first thing you're gonna look for is where you wanna cut. You know, start the cutting from. You know, normally you're looking for where you see these nodes. If you look right here, these are where the leaf growth is gonna push from. So you notice when I cut it, I cut it right below this little you know so there was a leaf right here you know and there was one right here too and there was one right here so once i once i cut right here it's going to stimulate these nodes to actually start pushing root 
you know so then I just kind of about like I mean six 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 to eight inches doesn't really matter you know I, I, it does matter I find that the taller the cuttings are is the more likely they end up drying out from my experience so you see there's a little node right here a little node right here you know so the roots is gonna push you and then you're gonna have leaf growth coming from from these all right so all right so we have the first cut in there then let's take a, a second cut in I have the second one right here and if you look right here again you see this is right where the leaf is that's the roots gonna push from there all right so all right this is this is up to you if you want to do this but a lot of people use rooting hormones I've used it in the past you know but once I educate myself more and in, in you know you grow over a period of time and you learn more you know I realize you know some of these cuttings can root without without using the rooting hormones you could use natural rooting hormone like aloe vera is a natural but honestly for mulberries they need no hormones or nothing you just stuck them right in the soil that's it stuck them down at least about two two inches down two three inches down and that's it yeah if you want you could cover this with a a let a don't put it in a shaded area garden and in a few weeks you're gonna find so you have new growth normally i like cutting out the leaves too yeah just to you know all right so let me bring you over into the garden where i normally put my cuttings this is the part of my garden I get a lot of shade, you know. So during the summer here, this is the coolest part of the house. And this is where I grow all the gingers and stuff. So I put the cutting right down below here. And within, with mulberry, within two weeks, you're gonna start seeing something happening, all right? So, so even, you know, even though you're gonna have your cuttings in a well-shaded area of the garden, Okay, you don't want it to dry out you're gonna make sure the soil keep moist you know okay, that's the key to for root development and everything you want it to be moist you have the option to if you want to put like a you know like a plastic bag over this or you know a ziploc bag key in to help keep the moisture in that also helps so guys all right look at this after a week look at you see the new growth coming right here look there's new growth is new growth new growth and that's how simple it is so i know you're probably going to get excited when you see this the new growth coming and you probably believe there can be roots in the container after two weeks you probably may have this a tiny bit of root you know but you want to give this at least a good three weeks to a month before you're really going to have you know some decent root development some cuttings will take at least sometime two months you know like for example the 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 suella or the hog plum that caribbean caribbean plum that takes almost three months for the roots to start developing mulberry take at least a month but this is just say you're on your way to success meaning the cutting is still alive and it's it's, it's getting there all right so don't get too happy and like yes let me you know pull it out to look try not to pull it out you know these methods where you could actually use a you see lead farmer did something where they call the peekaboo cup where you have you know a plastic you put it in a, in a see-through plastic cup and you have that red cup and you know that you could actually monitor the roots while it's growing you could do that as well you know that's an easy way to to see the root development you know but yeah you know, all right so that's it and even though i use this container I also stick mulberry plants in you know, the, the cuttings i stick the cuttings all over the garden you know let me show you some more cuttings that i propagate maybe like a month ago and show you what it's looking like yeah so if you look look there's some cuttings right here look how thin this is guys and it's still propagate into a nice looking mulberry now you see how small this is you put this in the ground and i promise you in 
two years, you have a, a, a 25 foot tree. That's how fast these stuff grow. And just from that little tiny cutting. See right here? Look how thin this is. And look at the amount of leaves. This is, these, these plants are probably about three, two, three months old. Yeah, from, from cutting. So that's a simple way just to propagate you know, new trees. And some, some variety of trees, you know, is easier to propagate from cuttings than some. Mulberry is one of the easiest. Pomegranate is very easy. In a, in a barbie's cherry is very, figs are very easy. There's some that definitely will give you challenges. You know, but some are extremely simple to do. All right, one of my most successful way of rooting mulberry is just sticking the, sticking the, con the, the cuttings into containers around the garden. I just come around and I just stick the cutting right in there. I do the same thing right here. And if you see here, you're gonna see cuttings all over, you know? These are all cuttings, uh, chaya that's just sticked in here and it's just growing. Look at these mulberry. Look at the size of these. These are thick rooted mulberry trees. You know, cuttings that's right here. If you look right here, this is a suela, hot plum. That's just stick right into the container, you know, and, and, it, and it grows. Same thing right here, if you look down here. Everything I just stick in this container. And this has been my most successful way of rooting not just mulberries. Look, these are, these are cuttings I just recently put in here. Look, I had a bunch of cuttings, I just stick them all in. Look right here, guys. Let me come around show you even better there's multiple cuttings let me move these leaves multiple cuttings i just stuck in one area and they all grow into this beautiful plant yeah and I, i'm always doing that though with cuttings i just walk around stick them in the ground stick them in containers you know that's a simple way you know? i'll come over here again and show you another way this is the Barbados cherry. Half a container full of water. I just stick the cuttings in there and they start rooting. Oh, see that? The main thing is just keeping the, 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 the keeping that. Let me show you some more. That's in sand. These are, this is in sand. These are all cuttings of the Barbados cherry. Yep. So I try to keep the sand a little bit moist. Yeah, and, and some of these cuttings are looking good. Yeah, this yes, it's still green. Yep, so. I'll show you some more cuttings that are actually stuck in container. So I'm always just, you know, wherever I'm at, if I make a cutting or something, I just stuck it in a container and I'm off to whatever I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, the simple, simple methods, guys. I remember one of the key things is, is patience with cuttings. You don't want to go there and keep pulling out the soil to disturb it. Let's leave it there in a nice shaded area garden yeah, and it's going to root. Just, yeah, just make sure the soil is not going to get dried out and it will root. Just, that's it. Keep it in shape. If you put it in the sun, the heat is going to dry out the cuttings pretty fast. Yeah. But if you have it in a shaded area, you know, the soil will stay moist longer and the cuttings are going to stay moist longer too as well all right so i hope this video was informative i hope it helps somebody out there thank you so much for watching i'll be blessed with peace love happiness and kindness one love thank you guys so much for supporting the channel it's appreciated by both me and my family all right see you in the next video